Hello! In this demonstration, I'm going to demonstrate setting up a complex page layout in a Microsoft Word document using Microsoft Word 2010 for Windows. Um, so for starters, the first thing you want to do is take a look at your document and decide how you want your document to look. So in this case, I have a title page, a table of contents page, and three chapters in my document. Um, complex layout usually um, is something that you do when you have um, you're using a double-sided printing and you may bind one side so you can imagine you you're doing a double-sided printing um, and you're going to um, put either a, a glue bind or a um, one of those coil bind things on the inside of it so it opens up like a book and so you're you're your page is going to look like a book and as a result of that there's things that you want to think about like typically when you're binding on the inside you want to have your inside margins a little bit wider than your outside margins that way um, because you lose some space because of the binding it makes the pages look more even so we will set all of that up the first thing we want to do is we want to add some breaks in here to break up some of the content um, based because their, their formats are going to be slightly different but also because you want to make sure certain pages always start on an odd page the odd page is the top page um, when you print double-sided. So the title page of course is going to start on an odd page because that's the first page but if I want the table of contents not to be printed on the back side of the title page but, but, I on, but on an odd page I'm going to insert a break and it's going to be called a section break and so in, under the page layout tab I go to breaks and I'm doing an odd page section break so I'm going to throw that in here. Now to make things so that you can see what I'm doing here I'm going to turn on my invisible character so you can see that what got inserted in there is a section break odd page. Now I'm going to add one, do the same thing before each of my headers. So section break odd page. So where we go, page layout, breaks, odd, and one more here, and finally one more here. Okay, so now that I've broken up all of my pages, I'm going to add some of my page formatting. Now, my first page I'm not going to worry about, right? My title page is going to be a regular title page. It's going to look however I want it to look. It's the top page. Um, I'm going to guarantee that it's going to print with a blank page on the back of it because I'm doing a section break odd. So when it prints, it, it'll print one page there and it'll print nothing on the back page. So then I go here and from here down now I'm going to want to set up from here for the rest of the document I want to set up my margins. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to margins and I'm going to go down to custom margins. And what I want to do is I want to tell it I'm using multiple pages and with my multiple pages I want them to be mirrored. So as a result of this you'll notice when I hit mirrored margins I got an inside and an outside margin. So instead of having a left and right margin I have an inside and an outside margin. And so I can make my inside margin, let's make my inside margin say 1.5. So your inside margin is slightly bigger than your outside margin. Okay then I want to take a look at layout over here and I want to say different even and odd pages. The reason for this is typically when you're doing a book layout your page numbers are always on the outer edge and not the inside, right? So if I didn't do different even and odd pages, what would happen is that my um, page numbers would end up on the inside on some pages and the outside on other pages and that looks kind of dumb. So as part of the mirroring, you actually also need different even and odd pages. Um, just a side note that if you wanted your chapter pages to have the first page different, you could put a different first page here. But if you do that, um, when I go to the step later to add page blank to, to make sure I have two pages you need to make sure you have three because you'll have three different footers headers and footers instead of having um, with different even and odd pages you have an even header and an odd header um, with different first pages you'll have a first page header an even header and an odd header so you have three different ones that you'll have to worry about okay I want to apply this change to this point forward in the document. So I want it to, because I put those other sections in, I want these changes to apply everything in front of this. I don't want them to apply to the title page because it doesn't really matter. And so this point forward, 1.5 margins, uh, 1.5 on the inside margins. So now my margins are set. So you can see that everything just sort of moved over a little bit. Okay. Now before I start setting my headers and footers for my document, the next thing I want to do is make sure because I'm doing an even odd page layout, so a two page layout, I want to make sure that every section in my document has two pages. 
Um, this is just so that when I do set up my headers and footers, I don't miss pages. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in here, and I just added an extra carriage return so that it, the breaks end up on different pages. I'm going to add just a page break. This is a manual page break um, in the document here, and I'm going to take it out later. Um, but for now, I'm going to put it in here to make sure that my section, that is my table of contents, has an even and an odd page. So at least it has two pages. And I'm going to do the same thing for each of my chapters if they don't have two pages already. So chapter one only has one page. So we add a couple carriage returns and then we're going to add a page break in here. And I'm going to do the same thing for my other two chapters. So just add a couple carriage returns and a page break. This just makes it easier when I'm setting up my headers and footers um, to make sure I don't forget anything and I'm not missing anything. All right. Now, when you're starting to set up your headers and footers, start at the bottom of the document and decide whether you want to do headers first or footers first. Um, let's do headers first, and I'm going to start at the very bottom of the document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on my very last page, I'm going to open up my, just double click, and it opens up my header and footer section. And I am in the header. And you'll note that my even page header for section five says same as previous. Because I have three chapters, I actually want them to be the same. So I'm not actually going to worry about the headers being the same for the three chapters until I get to my section that is chapter one. So when I see chapter one, so here's, here we go. So this is chapter one and this is the header before it. Now I don't want my header in my table of contents to be the same as my header in my chapter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this link. I'm going to click this button here to turn the link off. And so you'll note now that this is no longer linked to previous. Um, and I'm going to make this to say the same title as the chapter. So the, what I'm going to do he here is I'm going to actually just add um, a uh, quick part here, uh, field code, insert, here it is, quick part, field, style ref. And the one I want is style reference. ref okay and heading one um, okay so now it just automatically puts in whatever my heading one is um, into my thing now you'll know that this is an odd page header for section three I need to make sure I do the same thing for my even page header for section three so again this is same as previous now because um, so let me go back to my header here and break that link to previous now, because I inserted something on the outside, um, so I inserted it on an odd page on the left, I want to insert that on the right on the even page. So I'm going to change my alignments to be exactly the opposite, and then I'm going to add exactly the same thing. So insert, quick parts, field, style ref, Heading one, okay, so there's my chapter one heading. Okay, now let's go to the table of contents. So I go up to the table of contents, and again, I'm going to break my link to previous. I'm looking at headers first, so headers, table of contents, header for section two. I'm going to break my link to previous. Now, part of the reason I want to do this here is because I don't want to have headers and footers in my title page, and so I want to leave those ones blank. So here I'm going to go here, go to design, turn off my link to previous. I'm going to call this table of contents because this is actually usually a different kind of heading you can't use the style ref here and again remember whenever there's an even or whenever there's an odd there's an even so same thing to turn the link off to previous then let's set this up here table of contents all right now let's deal with footers footers will be a little more complicated so again now we're gonna go to chapter one we always start at chapter one here because I want my chapter two and three to be the same as my chapter one so I don't have to keep doing I, I can, those ones are allowed to link to the previous because I, I want them to be the same okay so section three again first thing I would do break the link to the previous so let's turn off the link to the previous now we're gonna insert a page number now odd page number I'm actually you want your page number to be on the outside and so it's actually on the other side here so I'm going to insert 
and that's not where page numbers go. Um, they're in header and footers. Page number. Okay, so I'm going to put a page number in the current position. Page number five. Well, hmm, this is chapter one and I want it to be page number one here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go page number, I'm going to format it, and I'm going to tell it to start at one here. So that will restart my page numbering. Now I'm going to jump down to, that's the odd section three, so now I need to go to the even section three. And even, you want your page number on the opposite side, turn off the link to previous, on the opposite side, add the same page number in the current position, and it's two, so that's fine. Next, go back to the table of content, or er, table of contents section. Table of contents section, we have again odd and even. So we start with the odd. Odd one, we want to break the link. We want to, um, just before we insert that, we want to change the side of the page that it's on. Then we're going to insert, actually go back to headers and footers, page number into the current position. We dump the page number. Now, here I want to do a couple of things. I don't want this page number, I want this to start at one again. Um, so I go to format page numbers, but I also want it to be in Roman numerals. So I make it Roman numerals and I tell it to start at one. Okay, now I jump down to my second page here. Again, same thing, break the link to previous and insert the page number. I should just have to put the page number in and it automatically knows it's II because it's in that section. So now I have a table of contents section and now I can close this because all my headers and footers are in place. So what you'll see in the document, um, and let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger for you, make it a little bit smaller here, so you can see the headers and footers. So if I look at the very beginning of the document, and we'll turn this off, there's a title page. Okay, there'll be a blank page on the back of that, you won't see that in here. Then I have my table of contents page, which has a little title at the top that says table of contents. On the opposite side it has a table of contents there. Underneath I have II and I, so you can see at the outer edges we're always going to have the uh, numbers. Then again my chapter has my chapter title, chapter 1, with a page number starting at 1. And now you see that the chapter actually flipped sides because it's it's mirrored and so my page number will also flip sides for 2. And then chapter 2 is going to go to 3 and 4. And so we have numbers. Now what we have in place here are the, remember those carriage returns that we put in place, we put those extra things in place. So if I take this page break out, it's going to go away. All right, no big deal. Um, but if I were to add it, well, let me take these other ones out. Let's take a couple of these other ones out first. I just want to demonstrate for you here. So we're going to remove the unnecessary page breaks that we had put in just so that we could set up our headers and footers properly. Right, and so now you'll see when you look at the page numbers that you're going to go one and then it's going to go one here, and then it's going to go to three, right, because page two isn't there. Um, when it prints, page two will print as a blank page. And so in order to make sure that my headers and footers are set up again, right, I'll show you here, if I reinsert that page break, uh, page break, let's go with that one you'll see that my headers and footers are still in place and they're still correct. So the headers and footers for the odd pages are still there because I set them up. So it's key that when you go through there you make sure that every unique section, so any section that's not linking to previous, that you create yourself um, an even and an odd page. Make sure you set everything up properly with even and odd pages before you delete those extra blanks and then that way when somebody goes to edit your document in the future and they end up adding a page then your headers and footers will still be correct. Um, and it's been almost 15 minutes so that is plenty long for this demonstration. So that is how to set up a complex page layout um, in Microsoft Word uh, 2010 or 20 yeah 2010 for Windows.